there's me, and I'm saying good evening to everyone at Symphony Space in New York City at Selected Shorts. And uh, Alice is in Victoria, British Columbia, and I am in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, having been snowed out of New York City. I was supposed to be there, but hey, I'm there anyway. And I'm here to introduce the one and only extremely unique Alice Monroe uh, to a theater full of her avid readers with the lineup outside the door of people waiting to get in. So, Alice, it wasn't just five or six people. Um, but first of all, I would like to... <laughs> first of all, I would like to thank very much the Google team, especially Corey and Bernie, who pulled this all together and made it possible, and the uh, power behind the scenes, who is Jen Marshall of Random House USA. Uh, who is the prime mover and made us all do it. So now I would like Alice to say hello to the theater full of her avid readers. And they can see you, Alice, though you may okay. not be able to see them. Yeah. I'm saying hello. I think it's wonderful of you to come out tonight. I am very touched. Thank you. Alice was a bit horrified. Horrified when... Cut it. About all the snow. So we've got a couple of questions uh, that we're going to discuss tonight. And the first one is, what is the book that you're reading right now and really enjoying a lot? Well, this book is a great surprise. I didn't even know about it until someone who is a very dear friend told me. And the title is... The Once and Future Great Lakes Country, which I would urge people to read who, who are near the Great Lakes and those who perhaps don't know anything about the Great Lakes. It's quite wonderful. And it's by John L. Riley. Oh, that and is right. I must, always yeah, remember yes. the author. John L. Riley. Yes, always. Yes. And I, I mistakenly sent you the copy in which John L. Riley had written a dedication to Graham Gibson, and then I got in trouble for it. <laughs> well, I'm, I thought that was a bit strange, actually. But then I've, I've learned to take all sorts of things as they come, and I thought maybe, maybe Graham got finished with this book and wanted to send it on to me. So isn't that possible? So there you are. Anyway, I've enjoyed it tremendously. It's a wonderful book. Is the teleology, but also the social history. And as you will all know, Lake Huron is one of the Great Lakes, and it is that lake which features so frequently in Alice's stories and in the towns along the side of it. So that's why it's of great interest to all. Well, of course, it was of great interest even before I wrote those stories because it is what it is. or even in the world. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, my next question is um, short stories. And why them? Why short stories in Canada in the 50s and 60s? Uh, because there were people writing short stories, but not so many people writing novels. Why do you think? You know, I, I didn't know at the time that people weren't writing novels. I thought I was the only person who, who meant to write novels and was writing stories instead. But uh, now that I think of it, there were, there were a lot of us trying stories, and there were probably quite a few good places to get published if you wrote stories in Canada. For me, it was because or, I had children, yeah. and uh, I couldn't take longer time, and it turned out I had no talent for writing novels anyway, even when I could take time. So it's a good thing I found out. And uh, remember Robert Weaver? Of course. Thank you. I, I don't think any of us could have got anywhere without Robert Weaver. He believed in us, and very few people did at that time in Canada. And he just he got programs going where our stories could be 
heard and he he never gave up. If he hadn't heard from you yeah. for a while, he'd write and ask you why. And you well, said, well, I have a baby. And he said, never mind. <laughs> uh, yes, he had a radio program called Anthology on the CBC. And it was probably the first place for many of us that ever actually paid us much, or indeed anything. Or paid us anything. Get, I, I yes. would have published for nothing in those days. I didn't even really understand that you got paid. And this wasn't because well, I wasn't... Go ahead. Um, it, it was not that I couldn't have used the money, but I just didn't think of it connected with writing. Well, it most frequently wasn't because mostly they were literary magazines and they were quite small. Uh, so they didn't pay you much. They might pay you maybe five dollars, but the CBC mm -hmm. actually paid you enormous yes. sums, like yes. fifty dollars and things like that. Dollars. I could go out and get myself a maternity dress with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes, indeed. Um, you were. Um, I think I've lost number three, Alice. I wonder what it was. Well, we'll just forge wow. ahead with number four. We'll forge ahead with number four. Um, number four is, <laughs> I should say this is not going to be my profession. Um, number four, that question that's always come up, which is about likable characters in fiction. And it seems to come around every once in a while that there's a sort of spate of people saying that, that why can't your characters be more likable? Did, did this ever bother you in any way? Did you feel your characters had to be good or that they had to be a desirable roommate or somebody that you would like in real life? You know, I find this a really strange question. I did then and I do now because um, I, I don't find people either either good or bad. There's such a mixture always that I wasn't aware that I had written about uh, these these deplorable people, or perhaps deplorable is the wrong word, but that people were um, were noticing that my characters had a lot of human characteristics that perhaps were um, not always desirable. And uh, I, I, so I didn't and, think I thought of it as such a, a mixture anyway. And uh, well, everybody asked me by. Yeah. yeah. So did reviewers complain that, that your women in particular were, were too mean or bad? Not much they didn't because nobody read my books much. The people who would have thought that weren't reading me. And uh, usually the people who read me um, liked what I wrote. They found something in it that they hadn't found elsewhere perhaps. So I didn't have a lot of people clamoring that uh, these people were not good and they weren't nice and you didn't want your daughter to grow up to be like that. Not at all. Think, well that's a good thing Alice and think how boring books would be if everybody in them was entirely good all the time. Um, would you read such a book? I don't think anybody, has anybody ever written a book that was really good with people who were nice all the time or even part of the time? I, I don't think so, but that's my personal opinion. People do complain sometimes about my characters and say that they're not nice, uh, which is, I would like them to point they, out the books they, um, with the nice people in them. Do they, re do they really think they're not... Um, that you can't believe in them? You, you can believe in them if they come from um, Oh, do I believe in what yeah. they say? No, no, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. in your uh, stories that, that pop in once in a while, uh, and particularly in the 40s and 50s, those characters are noteworthily more glamorous and have a much better clothes than the Canadian ones. Uh, since you're speaking to an American audience, can you say a word about that and do you think it's still true? Good heavens, I'd never thought of that. They had they had nicer clothes. Did I, I talked about their clothes. I know I no. naturally I would talk about clothes a lot because they were a preoccupation of mine. And uh, 
I suppose I I wrote because a lot the, about uh, clothes because when I was young, I didn't have the clothes I wanted to have. In fact, for a long time, I didn't have the clothes I wanted to have. And and uh, maybe not, maybe some of my characters were luckier. But mostly, yeah, I think some of them, it was about the people who people who had missed out on a lot of things that they would really like to have. But on the other hand, they realized these things that they would like to have were rather trivial. And so they weren't terribly proud of the, this, which, did I say that all right? <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, it's you did. The one I'm remembering. <laughs> What I'm remembering turned up in a Nile Green outfit. Remember Nile Green? I love and the, Nile. And the character Green. telling the story was yes, exactly. The character telling the story was very, very covetous of that Nile Green outfit. Yes, she would be indeed. Yes, so yes, yeah, she would be indeed. Uh, so my final question is going to be: Has the? Oh no, I had a, I had another question, which was the hate mail. Remember the hate mail? Yes, of course. So you got your first, yes, of course. Why did people, why do you think they wrote the hate mail and what was, was it about your stories that made them mad? Well, I think there are probably quite a few reasons. Uh, many people uh, then, and quite a few people now, want to read books that make them feel good make them feel happy and um, they, they would say that to me and write letters like that and uh, I found this difficult because the books that made me happy were books like Wuthering Heights and things of that sort and um, I, I didn't understand that you read you read books in order to feel that the world is better than it is and so I was I was offending without really understanding it for quite a while. And then, you know, things changed. And people now don't seem to be at all worried by that kind of um, realism or reality or whatever you would call it. It seems to be quite in now, perhaps. Yes, well, as I recall, the, the people that wrote you the first hate mail wrote it to you because they thought you'd put them in your stories in a well, negative that happened way. Too. And that's in, very interesting it, because as every writer knows, you, you really can't do that. Or maybe some people do it, but it's very hard to do, and it's actually a bit boring. So you always want to make your characters um, more interesting, perhaps, or giving away far more of themselves than the people that you know in real life. Wouldn't you say that? That the people you know in real life well, you I don't wouldn't... know about that much about compared to what you know about your stories. Yeah, that's certainly true, but they were probably going by external characteristics, such as that they lived in a similar town. Well, yes, you know, and if people are going to see the same people all their lives, and go to the same churches, and live in this way, it is rather too much, or it was too much at that time, to ask them to accept all the the strange things that human beings do, and, and even more the strange things that human beings think about. And I, I think uh, that's asking a lot at that time. Not not so much now. Everything has changed so, don't you find that Our everything final one. has changed yeah. amazingly since we were young, since I was young. Yes, I'm it has. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the final question is, has the outpouring of goodwill that has been worldwide and lots and lots and lots of people were made very, very happy by you? Yes. Did you, I haven't heard all of that story. Could you finish it? All of that question. I think. Uh, to admit that... It, okay, say it again. Okay. I didn't, Has the I didn't hear it all. So say it again, okay?
Well, I'll say it then. I think that what the question was going to be yes. Um, yes. was, did I find it rather strange? No, did you find it um, surprising and enjoyable? Would people like my stuff? Yes, uh, that, of course that, I do. That, that I love it. That, pe that people were happy you won. Yes, yes. Good, I, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a bit amazed about this. Um, I, I just, I, I can hardly believe it. It's so, so wonderful. Well, you have a big, a big theater full of very happy people tonight, all here to celebrate with you. And Tell so them to we'll have a very good time. Yes, have a very good time, everybody. And Alice is now going to say good night. Good night, everybody, and thanks for being here. Bye. <laughs> and uh, now I'm going to introduce. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to introduce the first story, which is how I met my husband. And uh, how I met my husband. It's 1974. It's quite an early Alice story, uh, but it shows a number of her unique characteristics. Uh, first of all, it is set on the shores of Lake Huron. This is where we're describing near the shores of Lake Huron, and it's that moment in history which is just after the war when there are a lot of restless veterans back from the war who of course were pretty glamorous to young women of the time. And this story has got a restless veteran back from the war uh, who's going around giving people rides in planes. And it also shows the social layering that Alice has always been so astute about. The narrator is a girl off a farm where they don't have electricity yet, and she's gone to work in a uh, post-war house that's got amazing modern conveniences. So is it a story about uh, romantic seduction, or is it a story about the romantic seduction of these people's modern bathroom, which has a shower in it and a big fluffy bath mat that this girl has never seen before? So this is the, this is the setting, and um, I'm forbidden to give away the plot. So now we are going to hear the story read out loud by a very good actress. Enjoy the story. 